Raspberry Pi monitor. This is a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS display with built-in speakers. Speakers are not that amazing. Got any grapes? Uh, but it has a couple tricks up its sleeve. There's a red and white version and I think they're making a black version too. The box is pretty simple. It's, uh, it's a box. <coughs> I'm glad they don't have like specialized printing. These boxes are recyclable, which is nice. Uh, but here's the monitor in a foam baggie. It's a 15.6 uh, inch display. It's like a laptop display with a little plastic casing. Now, before I get deeper into this box, I don't know if I think I took some of the stuff out of here already, actually. It, uh, the box comes with a USB-C to USB type A cable for power. If you power it from the Pi, you only get like 60% brightness, but if you power it from the wall, you can get 100%. And, uh, well, I'll move this away. I think it also comes with an HDMI to micro HDMI cable. I already took that out of here. Let's get this box out of the way. Come on, box. The monitor has these two speakers, which are very weak, and uh, they're audible if you're in a quiet place, but they're not that loud. They're you know, Get an external speaker if you want to listen to music or watch videos on this thing. They're okay in a pinch, I guess. Uh, but the sides and top are very plain. Uh, the bottom has two rubber bumpers on it. And then there's this hinge mechanism, which is interesting. I haven't seen this on any other monitors. Most of my monitors that I have that are portable are not that fun to uh, grab out of the bag and kind of like put somewhere. This one, it, they, they often have like folding origami things that are very annoying to deal with. This one has a leg, kind of like a Microsoft Surface tablet, where there's just friction on it. Uh, so there's friction and you can put it at whatever angle. So you could put it like this. Kind of like a tablet, it's not touchscreen, so that uh, would be less useful, but you can put it at whatever angle uh, or set it up like this. And uh, let me make sure you can actually see that. So yeah, uh, so you can put it at whatever angle, and it has this little cutout here for cables. If you use a Pi 400 or Pi 500, you'd put it here, and then you'd have your cables go through there. And uh, it's good that the HDMI cable is right in the middle here, and the power cable would go right under there. So I think that's the intended use case for this. It's not meant to be like the best monitor or anything, uh, but the rubber the rubber is is grippy and good. So I, I haven't had any issues with it sliding around on desks when I'm using it. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about this hinge mechanism is if you fold it all the way, there's two little nail holes. So even if you don't have a visa mount for a wall mount or something, you can just nail two, two nails into a wall and hang it on there. It just hangs up right on there. You could also, you know, have a hook on here, that would work too. Uh, but I, I like this design. The one thing that's really annoying about the way that they designed this uh, back mechanism is these ports here, the HDMI cable it comes with is not a right angle cable, and it's kind of thick, so it comes out and then it, it kind of like hits over here, so you kind of got to guide it. And the, the worst part is if you're putting a visa mount on, even if you have a removable bracket, uh, let, let me grab one and I'll show you the problem. So this is an HDMI, uh, normal size HDMI to HDMI cable. But I'll show you the problem that I have here. Uh, if you want to put it on a visa mount, you can't put the visa mount on and then plug in a cable. That's impossible. Uh, if you try doing that, you, there's, there's no access at all. So you have to plug your cables in before you put it on the visa mount. This is probably not the best monitor in the world for visa mount, but I, I mean, I like that they include that option. Uh, but now you can put that on and you can see the cable. It has just enough room to get out of there, uh, but it, it, it would probably be a good idea to use a right angle cable. And, and their own cable actually is like just a hair above the surface. So when you, when you clamp down the visa mount, it's actually gonna be pushing on the cable a little bit. So I think that's a design. They probably didn't spend a lot of time testing the visa mount out, but you might want to put standoffs. That's one option is to put some standoffs. A lot of visa mounts come with that. A lot of these brackets will come with standoffs that raise it up like this so that you could have a little bit of access to this because it's nice. And, and there is a headphone jack here too. I haven't tested that out, but I think that that would just take your HDMI audio signal from the computer and uh, put it out through headphones. So, Nice to have that. You don't have to have another cable running to your Pi or another audio interface or something. But yeah, I, I think for the mounting portion of this, this is the one flaw that I've noticed that's a little bit annoying to deal with. 
not a huge deal and most people buying this probably won't use visa mount and i'm glad that they have an option but that is a design flaw that uh, i do have to point out the other thing that's a little bit weird or annoying it's again not a big issue <clears throat> these buttons are back here and the status led is back here so when you have this set up let's say it's on your desk right here there's no way to know if the monitor's actually on the only way to know is if you look at the back which like you're not going to sit there turning your monitor around just to check if it's on or off so i don't know what the purpose of having an led back here is really um, because you don't normally have a monitor like this or turned around uh, but they do have good clicky buttons uh, there's power you, you can you can get a feel for it once you know that the power's on the bottom you can just reach around the back press the power button and then I think this is sound over here, sound up and down, and brightness. See, so volume up and down, brightness up and down, and they work fine. Uh, the OSD on it is not, it, it doesn't have like a menu system or anything. It just shows you like when you press brightness, it turns up the brightness. And uh, that's it. So I wanted to tear this down and see what's inside just because I like doing that kind of thing. I could end up breaking this because I've never, oh, there is, there. it looks like there's something under here. So we're gonna we're gonna get inside here 22 i wonder if this is like the 22nd one they've made on the production line i'm not sure what that number is i might look later uh, but let's see what's under this label is there anything under here nope okay there's definitely something here and it's a circular cutout so yeah this this monitor is uh, uh it looks like there's nothing there it's just it's just faking me out maybe that's like a mold line or something yeah, there's, there's no screw under there. Okay, well, I damaged that for no reason. I'm guessing then that this is just a... It's just clips around the edges, so let's try getting this open. We'll see what happens. Worst case, we have a not working monitor, but I see the clips here. So let's try getting in on a few of them. Okay, got that off. Here's the speakers. So they just have wires that run along inside there. And here's the panel. Do this relatively carefully because I don't want to damage the panel. Is it stuck on a little bit? Let's find out. If I look inside there. There's a stiffener plate behind it. It does look like it's kind of stuck on there. Oh, there are there are screws here, so this won't come off without getting this off first. Oh man, that's stuck. So I don't I don't think I'll be able to get this off further without potentially damaging this because I just saw there's a big adhesive strip here and here at least, and probably one in the middle, and uh, that's flexing a lot just to get it out. So I don't think this is meant to be user serviceable. Um, I, you know, at least you can get the outside cover off if you need to clean around the edges. Uh, that's not too bad, but I'm not going to break the screen because it's not even released yet and I still need to test with it. So there you have it. That's the, uh, the Pi monitor. I'll put, a, I'll put up all the specs on the screen here so you can see more, you can find more specs on Raspberry Pi's website. And, uh, I think it's like 99 bucks, something like that. It's probably not the best monitor in the world, but it's definitely not the worst monitor in the world for 99 bucks, especially considering it's relatively portable. I think the, the other gripe that I have is this would be a good portable monitor. It's light enough, it'll fit in your bag. However, they don't offer any uh, protection or bag or anything. So I wonder if there will be a third party option, you know, at some point, or uh, if they might sell something that would protect this better if you wanted to throw it in a backpack or something. Because uh, it's not, it's not, using it, it's not bad. It, it gets bright enough. It's not, uh, it's not going to be like rivaling a good laptop display. Uh, but it's, it works. And uh, you can now build your own completely Raspberry Pi based system with a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. And uh, I think the next evolution is, why not 
why not get a keyboard in here and then a battery here with a trackpad? That sounds an awful lot like a laptop. That would be very cool to see. Uh, you could have more options in the laptop space for low power ARM laptops. It could be possible. I, th I think somebody might hack one together using all these parts. We'll see.